My parents divorced when I was four or five years old. During and after the divorce, my brother, let's call him Chris, my mom and I moved into a two-bedroom apartment townhouse. Now this is not the nice townhouse you may imagine, but it wasn't a complete shithole per se, but they were older, built in like the 60s, this was the 1990s at the time, and it was in a rougher part of town, something a single mother with two kids could swing. The layout of the apartment is important to the story, so bear with me. When you walk in the front door, the kitchen is immediately to your left, and there's a short entrance hallway in front of you. There was no fence or privacy where there was a rather sad and sparse playground. In the hallway entrance again, on the right is a staircase leading up to my mom's and my brother's room. One day after school, my brother and I are out playing in the backyard on the playground, doing our kids stuff, when my mom told us she wanted to go check the mail. The mailboxes of the apartments are located at the front entrance, which is on the opposite side of the complex from us. Naturally, me being five and Chris was nine at the time, my mom didn't want to leave us alone, especially since it was about dark outside. We came inside and got ready to leave. On the way out, I remember my mom asking Chris if he had closed and locked the sliding glass door. Chris said he had. Cut forward a little bit, and we are back from the mailroom. It's maybe 20 or 30 minutes max, but it's hard to fully recall. My mom unlocks the apartment door. I'm lingering in the car for some reason or other. Chris doesn't notice that I'm not in the apartment yet, and on the stairs leading to the bedrooms on the right, he sees someone's feet disappear at the top of the landing, as if someone were running to hide. Thinking they're me, he doesn't think something's off. Chris goes to the kitchen, and I actually go upstairs directly into our bedroom to get ready for bed. My mom is at the table in the dining room area, near the split-level living area downstairs. While I'm completely clueless getting ready for bed in the bathroom, Chris from downstairs keeps hearing noises of someone walking around in my mom's bedroom. Now I had a bad habit when I was this age of going through people's stuff. Not maliciously, I was barely five, I was just curious. And Chris, thinking I'm being a nosy bastard going through all my mom's jewelry, runs upstairs to catch me in the act and get me in trouble. Chris runs up the stairs, sprints across the hall to my mom's bedroom, and throws himself stomach first onto the bed. When he looks up, he sees a tall, slender man with a bright green goblin latex Halloween mask on, and he's holding a large kitchen knife. My brother sits silently in shock as the man in the goblin mask raises one finger to his mouth, indicating for him to be quiet. And in true form for my brother, he screamed bloody murder for our mom. Now I heard things going on, but I have no idea and I'm not aware of what's happening. I have gotten into my big oversized sleep shirt and I'm going downstairs to have a glass of milk before bed. When Chris screamed, the man ran downstairs and encountered my mom who immediately jumped into action. Our baseball gear was in the living room and my mom grabbed a bat and started fighting this man in her house while he's taking swipes at her with the knife. I first notice what's happening when I've come downstairs to the kitchen, pulled up a step stool to reach to the counter and pour a glass of milk, and that's when I see over the bar the guy push my mom off the steps into the split level living room, landing on her back. She starts swinging the bat widely, trying to make any contact she can with him, and she does. I'm glued to this image, truly frozen in place. Not scared, just so young that I can't fully process what I'm seeing. The man finally runs towards the front door, which is right by the kitchen. I'm mid-pour in my glass of milk, frozen, and the milk continuing to spill over the counter and floor. He stops and turns directly to me in that green goblin mask with the knife and screams a primal, deep sound of rage and frustration, and then slams the door so hard the whole place shakes. I continued standing on my stool, pouring milk everywhere, frozen for I don't know, could have been a second but it felt so long. I don't remember what happened after all that, but the parts I've relayed are very clear to me. 
Moral of the story is lock your doors and never assume that you did. When I was 17, my bedroom had a window looking out on my backyard. The backyard was fenced in, but on the other side of the fence were some woods and a retention pond. I had never been scared of this and kept the blinds open so that when the sun rose in the morning, the natural light would help me wake up. One night, when I was up late on my phone with my dog laying in bed next to me, at around 2 a.m., my dog jumped up and started barking at the window. At first, I thought he was just barking at his reflection and told him to stop. But I then realized he was looking at the left side of the window while his reflection was on the right. I couldn't see outside the window because I had left the lamp on my nightstand on. All I could see in the window was the reflection of my bedroom. Not wanting to alert whatever might be out there that I was scared, I faked the yawn, set my phone aside, and turned off the lamp. I then laid down facing the window, and I swear I saw a set of human eyes looking back at me from the left side of the window. I drink a lot of water at night, so I had an empty bottle on my nightstand. I grabbed it and pretended to just realize it was empty. I turned on the lamp and acted like I was going to get water. I went to my parents' room and my dad told me not to worry. We had these motion-activated floodlights and they hadn't turned on, so that there was no way anything was out there. I went back to my room and told myself I was just seeing things. I closed the blinds and turned off the lamp and got some sleep. When I woke up in the morning, I went to take my dog out and decided to check out the pine straw bedding underneath my window. It was visibly disturbed. I did my best to ignore that and remember what my dad said about the floodlights that work pretty well until my dad tested the floodlights later that day and found out that the bulbs had burned out. To this day, I keep my blinds closed and my lamp off when I sleep. I don't want to risk anything being able to see me and if anything is somehow peeking through my window, I want to know it's there. I'm from the UK, if that's any context. So way back in 2016, when the whole killer clown epidemic was huge, I was walking through the woods at around 10 p.m. alone in order to get to a party slash gathering that was happening in a secluded part of the forest. It was almost pitch black and I could barely see in front of me, besides the flashlight on my phone, and everything seemed normal as I was walking to the party. I got to a long stretch of the woods, with no defined path, but it was the quickest way to the party, so I took it. As I got around midway through, I heard something to my left. I turned and saw a shadowy figure sitting on a fallen log. I was understandably unnerved, but I couldn't make out what it was, just shadows from the moonlight, or if it was an actual person. I made the mistake of shining my phone light directly at it and I was instantly terrified. Sitting there alone in the middle of the woods was the largest man dressed as a clown with full face paint and sporting the creepiest smile imaginable. I tried to call five different people as I was passing him and then I heard him get up and follow behind me. I instantly started sprinting towards the end of the long stretch onto the path which had a barbed wire fence down the side of it. During the sprint, I was pretending to be on the phone with one of my friends, and I could hear him running after me, but there was no chance in hell that I would be turning around to see if I was right. When I got to the path, I jumped over the fence as fast as I could and sliced my hand open as I did so. I then turned around and kept running backwards as I saw the clown. He stood behind the fence just staring at me and smiling. I didn't stop running until I got to the party, and I was scared for a long time after this. You have to bear in mind that there were so many rumors of people being killed by people dressed as clowns at this time, and while I'll never know if that man had evil intentions or was just trying to scare me, 
It was extremely strange and scary to live through. 